All right, in today's video, I'm going to talk about some SharePoint and Power Platform best practices. And by this, I mean uh, best practices when using SharePoint with Power Platform tools such as Power Apps and Power Automate. Um, so basically, this is a collection of things that I've learned over the years, uh, learned from my frustration, and don't do these things that I've done in the past, and your life will be a little bit better. So today we're going to focus specifically on lists, libraries, and columns, which you probably are already familiar if you've used the Power Platform and you've used SharePoint, you're probably familiar with lists and libraries, and you probably have run into the same hang-ups that I've seen. So hopefully this will, uh, this video will serve as a way to help you avoid those in the future. Uh, so there are a few things we want to talk about. First and foremost, um, keep URLs clean and URLs, web addresses, whatever you want to call them. Uh, basically, when you create a new list or a library, whatever you name you give that list or library, that becomes the URL. And as someone who did some web design work back in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, I was always taught never have spaces in URLs. Now, today's browsers, they don't care. They'll load a page just fine if there's a space in the name and in a web address they'll be encoded um, but personally just as a as a kind of a it's a hang up I have where I hate seeing those encoded encoded characters in list or library names so when you're creating a list in library be sure to use only letters numbers dashes or underscores don't use spaces, don't use any other punctuation characters, uh, anything like um, parentheses, ampersands, all of those things are going to be encoded and you're going to end up with these weird looking characters. So yes, you might need to compromise a little on what that list or library URL is to make it clean. But at the end of the day, you can change the display name of the list or library to be whatever you'd like. Um, so let's just take a look at how that works. So I'm going to go into my SharePoint Basics site here, and I'm going to create a new list. So I'll just click New List, and we'll just create a blank list, and I'll call this List with a Space, and click Create. And what you'll see is in the web address here, it's list percent twenty with percent twenty percent twenty a you know, all that garbage. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is simply delete this list and delete it. Now obviously you would want to do this before you create the list. So we'll create a new list and we'll call this clean list name and you'll note that for my own sanity I kind of use what we call camel case where the first letter of each word is capitalized that way I can come back later and clean this up uh, but when I create the, the list name this way click create we'll see that it is simply clean list name now uh, in a in a list you can simply click on the name here and basically replace that with the whatever you want the actual display name of the list to be and just as a, as a cautionary note it will take a few minutes for that to up, update if that list name or that list is linked in your navigation so it will update on its own just give it five or ten minutes uh, and you should be fine all right so now we've got a clean list name um, next thing we want to talk about is internal column names. So when you create columns in SharePoint lists, uh, basically there's a right way and a wrong way. And one thing that a lot of people aren't aware of, uh, if they've not had a long background in SharePoint, is that there is uh, columns can have an internal name and an external or display name. Now the internal name is set when you create the column and you cannot change it later. So basically, if you create a column with a weird name, 
that internal name is always going to be there. And again, you, this might not matter to you if you are only using SharePoint, if you're only using it through the web interface, but when you want to reference that column name in Power Apps or Power Automate, that internal, that old, ugly, whatever incorrect display name, I'm sorry, internal name rather, uh, could come back and haunt you. So that, generally speaking, before I create a column, I think carefully about what I want that to be. And if, if necessary, if, it, if I might want to change the name later, I use something that's very generic, um, sort of specifically generic. So it's specific to what I want that column to hold, um, but generic enough that if I have to change the display name, the original internal name is still going to make sense. And worst case scenario, you can delete that column and recreate it with a different name uh, at some point later. Just understand if you do that, after your list has, you know, hundreds or thousands or more rows of data, then you are potentially looking at losing the data in that list or that column rather. Uh, so think about what you're going to call the name. Come up with something that's going to be meaningful and make sense. Also, be sure that you use the right type of column. Um, a lot of people will just create their list with all single line of text columns, and that's easy because it's the default option. Um, but at the same time, if you're storing something like a number or a date, uh, then you need to be sure that you're using the right, you know, the a number column or a date column because date columns are different. If you want to be able to sort and filter on a date value, it needs to be a date column. You can't do that with a text column. Um, now, finally, there are a few different ways to create a column. Uh, the most obvious is from the column or from the list interface itself, there's an add column button, um, which is actually really easy. And, and if I'm just doing a quick proof of pro concept, prototype, whatever it is, that's what I'll use to add columns into a list. Uh, however, when you do that, you still want to be sure to only use letters, numbers, spaces, and underscores. So no dashes here because dashes, again, are going to be encoded. Now, it's uh, the uh, internal name of the column also becomes sort of a URL. It's not really a URL, but it's used in place of a URL. It's used in the URL in certain circumstances. So that's why you want to be sure that just like the name of the list or library, you want to keep these column names clean. So I'm going to jump back over to our list here. And I'm going to add a column. And I, for the sake of argument, I will create a text column here. We'll just select text, hit next, and I can say, column one with a space in there and hit save and that's fine now how do I know it's fine well I want if I want to look at the internal name of that column there are a few different ways to do it I'm going to show you the way that I do it because not that this is the best and certainly not the only but it is the what I found to be the most reliable and kind of least finicky uh, and that is to go to the list settings so click on the gear click list settings and then go to the column that you created click on it and then look in the URL and at the end of the URL you'll see something that says field equals and then it'll be the name of that column so you'll see even though I included a space between column and one it cleaned that space out uh, it'll also basically it will allow underscores um, but it will remove spaces other characters that you might include in there will get encoded. So again, if you use a parenthesis or an ampersand or a dash even, you'll see something weird. So just to show you an example of that, if I go back to our list here and I create another one, we'll just make this a text column again and call it column two and hit save. So I put a dash in there and again we'll go to list settings column two and then when we look at that it's now column underscore x zero zero two d underscore two. Uh, now again 
if I'm only using this in, in SharePoint, if I'm only looking at it through the web interface, then that's the name I'm always going to see, and it doesn't really matter. But when you want to be, when you want to reference that column or be able to reference that column I, uniquely in a flow or an app, uh, having a clean internal name for the column is going to be kind of important. Uh, this is especially important uh, in columns that you might where you may need to use OData filters because in those filters you always need to use the internal name of the column. Uh, Alright, so that's the keeping your column names clean. Now there are other ways to create columns. Um, basically there are these things called site columns. Well number one you can, you can go from the list settings page you can create a column there. Uh, the problem, or not the problem, but the, the thing to keep in mind is that if you create a column from that list settings page the macro or whatever it is that cleans the column name when you create it from the add column control doesn't kick in so it if you include a column name you know from the you know let's just show that just to clarify uh, I'll go into list settings again and here I'm going to create a column click create column and this time I'll call it column space three again single line of text click OK and then when I go to that column we'll see that it replaced that space with underscore x zero zero two underscore two zero underscore uh, bottom line is because I included that space that internal column name now has that encoded space in it uh, so if you are going to create it from the list settings page then basically you can create it here call this column but four without the space uh, and then click OK that way it will get created as just column four without any weird encoded characters and I can go into the column name here and just throw that space back in there. Uh, so again, if you are creating it either from the create column button in the list settings here, you'll want to just keep those spaces and just use letters and numbers and maybe dashes. Um, that's, up, that's up to you. I'm sorry, underscores, not dashes. Letters, numbers, underscores. Um, now, if you're creating site columns, site columns are these other kind of columns that you can create at a site level. Uh, in other words, if you want to use this same column, maybe it's a, you know, uh, employee name or something like that that you're going to use in multiple lists and libraries in your site, you can create that as a site column. I've got a separate video on that. I'll link in the description. Uh, but basically, when you're creating those site columns, it's all sort of using that classic interface. So when you're doing that, be sure to create, you know, use just the letters and numbers. Uh, basically treat it as if you were creating those column names or those columns from that list settings page as opposed to the add column uh, button or control in the list. All right, and then the last one I'm going to talk about here today is don't import your list from Excel or CSV. I understand how how alluring that is, how, how tempting it is, because you have this data in Excel that you want to put into a list in SharePoint and you don't want to build out the list manually. So you see that Excel or CSV option and, and, and jump on it. The problem is that it basically gives you meaningless internal names because the initial, the first column it creates will be title but every other column after that will simply have an internal name of field underscore and the number of, you know, the sequence number. So the second column will be field underscore two, third will be field underscore three. And if you're, let's say, in your Power Automate flow and you're using an update item action, you're just going to see field two, field three, field four not necessarily knowing what those map to in terms of the display name of the column. Uh, so let me just show this just to prove what I'm saying there. I'm going to go back to our home page here and I'm going to click new and list and f 
first we'll just do Excel because that's easy, but we'll select Excel. And I'm going to upload a file, and I have a an Excel file here with the presidents of the U.S. from 1789 to 1901 in a table format. Now, the data in that Excel file does need to be in a table, um, and it's in table one. That's fine, but we've got the, the name. That's going to be the title column, the year, the first lady, and the vice president. And it's making all of those text, which is fine for this particular use case. Uh, but when I click Next, uh, again, I'm going to keep this name. I'm just going to use the spreadsheet name, which is fine. We'll keep that as is. And it's going to create that. And now the problem is when I go in and look at the list settings, um, so president, if I look at that, that is field title. That's fine. Um, I mean, ideally it would say president name, but I'm okay with it being title because at least that's consistent from one list to the next. But uh, actually, here's another tip. You can also, depending on your browser, you, if you hover over the list name, or I'm sorry, the column name, you may see... Uh, it, as you'll see in the bottom left corner of my browser here, it's it's previewing the URL, and I can see at the end of that it says field underscore one for year, field underscore two for first lady, field underscore three for vice president. So if I were updating this list from a flow, or if I wanted to filter on one of those, if I wanted to filter based on the, the name of the first lady, I would need to use field underscore two EQ and then whatever value I want to filter on. Um, so just know that that's going to be confusing. It's going to be a problem. And the same thing will happen if you import from a CSV. Uh, so it's really using kind of the same mechanism, but just to, to prove my point, we'll go back, click New List. And I have that same list, but stored or saved as a CSV file. So we'll select that, click Open. And it's got the same data, the same columns. This time I'll call it C underscore CSV at the end. Click Create. And there we go. But again, if we go to our list settings and hover over there, again, it's going to have field underscore one for year, field underscore two for first lady, etc. So as, as tempting as it is to import your data from an Excel file or from a CSV file, uh, know that there is a payoff if, you, if the intent is to work with that data in Power Automate, in Power Apps, in other things in the Power Platform. Those internal, kind of meaningless internal column names uh, are going to come back to haunt you in the end. So. Hopefully this was useful to you. Thank you and have a great day.